All right, let's go into how to do some kind of custom healing abutments, pre-surgical, provisionals, um, or you know, even final abutment, uh, one abutment, one time thing. So the first thing we're doing here in Plameca Romexis is that uh, we are merging our intraoral scans to the uh, CBCT. And um, you know, this is a critical step. It's really important to check how accurate that merge is through your cross-sectional views and various different types of sub-slices. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in our wax ups that we did. So now our wax ups are visible and in addition to our wax up being visible, we also have our um, intraoral scan. And our wax ups are in proper occlusion. That's important um, <clears throat> to point out. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna, in this case, plan a urus uh, implant. And this is a kind of a, just really quickly, I'm gonna throw some implants in here spending a little tiny bit of time trying to get them to be um, properly placed within a kind of a difficult um, scenario with the amount of bone this patient has. Looking at implant-centric view, just trying to tuck that in about two to three millimeters uh, apical to the CEJ. And there we go, that's pretty good. So let's do the same thing on the uh, other side. So we got a similar implant being placed here. We're also, uh, I don't know if you noticed, we're adding the urus sleeve um, as we plan that implant. And the nice thing about the urus implants and the, and the sleeves is the heights are predetermined based off of the surgical guide kit. Um, so you, so you uh, have the offsets kind of figured out for you in the software. In this case, we're using the 9.5 uh, millimeter offset. And, um, just planning this implant in this site number 19, trying to get it uh, the way that I want it with the possibility of having it be being screw retained or screw mintable. But we're pretty good here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna attach the scan body to the Uris implants by going into the abutment library in Remexis and adding a, a regular scan body. So you have, for Uris, you have a narrow or a regular, anything 4.0 or higher is a regular. So we're gonna go ahead and attach the scan flag, scan body in the abutments tab. You can see it adds it at the proper height, fixed distance from the implant platform. Okay, and spin around implant centric view and you can see the scan flag has been appropriately attached to the implant and it's also timed to the implant sleeve in such a way that when you rotate the implant sleeve, it corresponds to the timing on the implant, which would then for surgery, you would line up properly if you wanted to do say, a final abutment on the day of placement or custom healing abutment, you could send off to true abutment and they can make you a custom healer. They could make you a one abutment, one time thing. They could send you the STL file for a provisional that you could mill and you could screw in the final abutment and screw and then cement on the provisional, all that kind of stuff you could do. So attaching to the other side as well, site 19. And um, I'm gonna try to show you guys a little bit better by maybe taking off the teeth so you could see the scan scan body. And so I'm gonna come down to my objects browser and I'm gonna hit the little eyeball on the wax up to turn that off. And then let you see, here, let's make this a little bigger. So now you can see the sleeves and you can see the scan bodies. The sleeves have a little notch. Um, these notches are cool. They slap, they kind of, when you slap them in the surgical guide, they click down into perfect uh, little precision grooves. So it's really cool when you go do this. But now let's rotate the sleeve and you're gonna notice what happens. When you rotate the sleeve, the scan flag rotates with it to get your timing. Okay, so that will course, that notch will correspond to a notch on the driver when you place your implant. Um, so everything will be timed appropriately such that if you did get a final abutment or a healing abutment or something that was um, engaging, it, 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 it will work out um, to where you could go ahead and do any, types of, any type of restorations that you want. And this works also well for really well for pre-surgical hybrid provisionals and things like that. So now that we have all this information, you have a couple options. Um, number one, go ahead and make your surgical guide and export that out as STL. So let's do that really quick. Um, in Remexis, it's super simple. We're just gonna circle the, the arch. 
And I don't mess with the parameters too much um, because it's pretty much automatic. It does give you complete freedom to change how, whatever you want. Thickness of the guide, the gap to the teeth, so how tight it fits. Sleeve gap, so how loose the sleeve is in there, whether you want to use super glue or you want to use friction fit. It also lets you create custom uh, sleeve tubes and all sorts of crazy things. So now I'm just coming in here and I'm just quickly editing the guide by using the eraser tool. It does have a pretty powerful undercut block out, so you could extend the guide as far down as you want without having uh, to worry about it engaging in the undercut and preventing uh, proper seating of the guide. I'm also going to come in here and relieve some of the material on the lingual. Some people like to put a bar across the mandibular for shrinkage of the surgical guide material during polymerization and post-cure and post-processing. A bar will help control that shrinkage a little bit. Um, for a better and more accurate print. I typically don't have issues with that on the printers that I use, so I don't worry about that. Accidentally cut into my sleeve, no worries, you just hit undo, and that undo button will erase my mistake. That sleeve housing is critical, you don't want to mess with that. Okay, so you know, we're, we're pretty good. You know, you could nitpick and spend a lot of time, sharp edges and things like that. I find that it's it's important to smooth out major sharp edges, but anything that's small, you don't have to really worry about too much because it'll, it won't be that big of a deal. Okay, now the last thing that I kind of like to do before I go ahead and export this as an STL is add holes to verify seating. So I'm gonna put a couple holes in the premolar, maybe some on the canine, like that. Okay, and that way the cusp tips will, will show through so when you seat that guide, you could verify that there's no excess of space between the guide and the teeth surfaces visually, and then you could also feel it with an explorer to make sure that it's down. There's also a way to add notches if you like, if you prefer to add um, notches to the surgical guide versus um, holes. Whatever you want to do, you could do. Um, so it's really simple. So then what you're going to do, you add text. You could type in anything in that text box that you want, and you, you could go ahead and add it to the guide. So we'll go ahead and generate that guide and we'll 3D print this. It, it generates an STL for you out of Remexis for you to use um, the 3D print or mill or whatever. And the magic really happens after the guide is generated. Um, and, and this is possible with other implant systems as well, but you know, Remexis has like a hundred different implants you could create guides with. but there's only a few that have this, the scan bodies where you're able to attach. And, and Uris is, is one of the few. And so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and, and find a folder to save this in. I have like a gajillion files on my desktop, so it's kinda takes me a while to find things. And so now it's gonna go ahead and it defaults to the, back into the um, implant, implant module and it's going to go ahead and generate a PDF report that basically tells you what sleeves to buy, what implants you're placing, um, and it gives you kind of a cool little document that you could print and pin up on your wall on the day of surgery so you don't screw up. It's very important and when you're doing like multiple, like a larger case where you're placing six or seven or eight implants, um, this way you get all controlled here little Instagram shot here, so we're gonna just make that look hot. And, all right, so, you know, I really like to get some snapshots of everything. Um, it just is really cool, so I'm taking a million different snapshots. We're gonna go ahead and these snapshots are placed in the two-dimensional record as JPEG files you could export out. Now we're gonna export out everything. So look at this, we're able to export out the implants, the extension tubes, the scan flags, the sleeves, the we're able to export out the surgical guide, the fitted models, the wax up, even you could export a STL of the CBCT. All that stuff could come flying out. And so we have all these files. I'm gonna go ahead and open them in Mesh Mixer to show you what we have. So I'm just dragging this in here. So look at all the stuff that we have. We have, we have the crowns that we designed um, from the wax up. We have our intraoral scan. We have these scan flags. We have these implant extension tubes, and we have these little cylinders that represent the implants. And so I'm just going through these different files. I really quickly just punched some holes in those crowns. This would be the bare minimum you could do if you want to go ahead and 3D print the temp. 
and you could reline this on a, a titanium and temp cylinder if you wanted to. So and I do have a separate tutorial on how to do that, but basically you're just going to do a Boolean difference of the implant extensions um, and the crowns, and it takes about one second. But if you wanted to do something a little bit more fancy, what you could do is export the um, intraoral scan as an STL file, and then e export also the intraoral scan with the scan flags as a separate STL file. So we have two STL files um, going into ExoCAD or PlanCAD Premium now. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and pop open PlanCAD Premium, and I'm going to show you what to do with these files. So, so if you want to do something more fancy than just cutting holes and crowns, go ahead and select the um, teeth and anatomic crown, screw retained. Um, in this case, we don't need an opposing because we already have... <clears throat> Actually, in this case, we're making custom healers, so we don't need an opposing. And so now you're going to load the... Um, it's going to ask you for the lower, and then it's going to ask you for the scan body scan. And so here we have everything that we need in PlanCAD Premium. And you can see, at this point, the computer thinks you scan these in the mouth, the implants are already placed and integrated, and you screwed in some scan bodies and scanned it. That's what the computer thinks at this point. So you're kind of tricking it, and you're hoping that your surgical guide is perfect and your implants are placed perfectly, and it's all going to be according to the plan, and most of the time it is. So now I'm going to click... Um, Go to my full library, I'm going to um, true abutment and I'm adding um, the scan flag from ExoCAD and I'm pinning it to the what the computer thinks is the intraoral scan of the scan body flag, but it's the exported elements from Remexis. Okay, so now we have uh, that X. Uh, that's merged perfectly and so now I'm drawing my kind of emergence profile in ExoCAD and you could ghost over the wax up to do this if it helps and we're just going to do some quick little dirty designs here not spending too much time on um, the designs because we're ultimately going to cut these for custom healers now what if you don't have ExoCAD what if you don't want to do all this well send it to true abutment and they'll actually go ahead and mill you some custom titanium healing abutments or better yet especially in the anterior, um, they could go ahead and mill you a final abutment and send you the STL file of the temp that you could mill in your mill or 3D print in your 3D printer. And then you could do a screw mentable. Whatever you want to do, you could do. So now in ExoCAD, I'm just playing around here. Um, you know, it's not really hard to do. There's a million different YouTube tutorials, but what's beautiful about ExoCAD is how open it is. So now I could export this. Um, all as an STL file. Um, it, it even will include the engaging elements. So the tie base, the hex, everything will come out. And so back into Mesh Mixer now, I'm just going to separate it out for one. I'm uh, flipping normals here because um, sometimes the normals come uh, inverted and you have to flip normals. And so you can see all the elements. I'm combining them all into one. Now you could 3D print that whole thing. Um, and have it be an occlusion. I don't recommend it because it's probably going to snap, although I know a lot of people that do it. Right now, I'm cutting it off and go ahead and exporting that um, for a custom healer. Okay. And so what I do with that custom healer, in this case, I'm going to FDM print it. I know blasphemy, right? FDM printing is, is ancient technology. Actually, in this case, we're FDM printing some peak. So it's polyether, ether, ketone. And peak is one of the most biocompatible polymers that we have. It's also um, extremely strong. So when you print peak, you're able to screw it in and it doesn't break. Um, in fact, I think it's extremely durable. So I'm gonna go ahead and print that. And here it is printing on my uh, CreateBot F430. This is a peak printer. The extruder goes up to 420 degrees and we have peak filament. Peak filament is wicked expensive, but this part still costs me about uh, 50 cents. So, you know, that's one way how you could do this stuff, guys. I hope you learned something, and I can't wait to see what you all do with it.